Fuck you! I will burn this place down! You told me last week all this shit would be over. You told me last week I would be free. You told me everything was fine. I met all your requirements. How the fuck am I supposed to believe you now? You know, you better hope they fucking kill me tonight because if they don't, I'm putting a bullet in all your fucking heads. Hi. It is Saturday, March 15th, and we should probably make this quick. We're going to have some company real soon, and I'm not just talking about the pizza I had for lunch. That's one of the beautiful things about this city. Even on a day like today, you can still grab a slice. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, because Ben's is still open. <laughs> the whole damn city's on fire, man, and they're cranking out pies like they're the band on the Titanic. God bless you guys. If by some sort of miracle I make it through tonight, I will see you tomorrow. Hey, speaking, speaking of a business that will survive the apocalypse, that's right. That's right. We're still doing ads tonight. Nobody said I couldn't make a, a little bit of money during all of this nonsense. Oh, a little fart for you little kitties out there. Today's farewell episode, for real this time, is of course brought to you by our friends over at Granny Annie's Happy. If you're having anxiety, or you just want to fuck more, check out GrannyAndies.com. They'll set you up with a licensed physician to see if you qualify for their happy pills. And once you get approved, be sure to use our promo code. Say it with me, folks. Toilet fucking 20 to get 20% off the best boner pills money can buy. One more time. If you think you and your family might have to live in a bunker for the next couple of years, don't forget about your pecker. Show your pecker some love at grannyannies.com and use code TOILETFUCKING20 in all caps to get 20% off your order. Fun fact, kids. I don't know if you knew this, but... When we started doing the show, Granny Annie's was operating out of the owner's apartment on the Lower East Side. That's right. And now provides the highest minimum wage in all of America, thanks to the tremendous amount of support you guys have shown them over the years. In fact, this show has been on the air so long that some of you younger uh, listeners might have been conceived thanks to those happy pills. So it's good to know that we accomplished some good on here over the years. Hmm? So here's one more toot toot salute to all you folks over at Granny Annie's. I love you. Ah. Ooh. Oh, real cheek flapping there, kitties. <laughs> I hope, I hope you all continue to find success without me. Ready when you are. I'll try to stay on script as much as possible, but I'm not making any promises. In case you missed the show last week, or if you don't live in the city so you don't believe everything that you're seeing on the news, last week I announced my retirement as part of the truce our lovely coward of a president made with Canada. Clearly. That went well. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> you know, I was I was planning I was planning on riding off into the sunset after the last week's big finale. But the Prime Minister of Canada, I think her name is Dr. Poutine, yeah, wasn't satisfied. 
She wants blood for blood. Blood will have blood. She wants me to feel all the pain I have caused Canadians over the years. Six days ago, members of the Canadian Armed Forces kidnapped my wife and my son. Unfortunately, I wasn't home at the time because if I was, I would have murdered those moose fuckers with my bare hands. Okay, 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 that was from the heart, but I don't hear the phone ringing. They're being held somewhere in Montreal, which leads me to why I'm here today. According to President Chicken Shit, my family will be released when I meet Prime Minister Putin's two demands. One, she wants me to, quote, speak from your heart and tell the truth for once in your life. And two, she wants... She wants to set me on fire, live on the air. Uh, pr President Chicken Shit immediately agreed to those demands, but well, I was hoping, you know, we could kind of negotiate a bit, uh, especially the whole lighting me on fire part. But if I refuse her demands, she will murder my wife, murder my son, and continue to burn down every building in New York City before bombing the rest of the country tomorrow morning. Talk about a short notice. Hey, you remember when Dave Chappelle thought he was canceled? Well, Dave, hey, buddy, I got news for you, man. You had it easy. I don't recall anyone ever kidnapping your family or threatening to light you on fire. Hey, Dr. Poutine is watching. She's watching live right now. And she will call me when she's satisfied. And judging by her picture, I don't think this chick has ever been satisfied in her entire life. You know what I'm saying? But as soon as that happens, my family will be set free. And I, I will become the Joan of Arc of podcasting. And I know what you want me to say, Poutine. But you don't get to where I am without knowing a thing or two. But I am not ready. I am not ready to talk about plastic bags yet. You wanted me back on the air? Well, here I am. I'm back on the air. But we're going to do things my way. Because I am in control. I will do anything. I will do absolutely anything to protect my family. So fuck it. Hand me the matches, bitch. I will light it myself. I will meet your demands. I will speak the truth. I will speak from my heart. I, I will find out where the fuck we're supposed to be. Guys, what page? What page? Yeah, here, hold up your fingers. Yeah, I can count. Yeah, six, page six. Oh, my bad. I'm, I'm already there. Okay. Hooby. To all my turtlers, all my beautiful, kind, and supportive turtle herds. Please do not take what I am about to say as a sign of surrender or a sign of weakness. Take it as what it is. For today's show, do not think of me as the host of America's number one comedy podcast. For today's show, think of me as who I really am. <laughs> oh God. Oh God. This can't be happening. This can't be happening. Jesus Christ. This can't be happening. <laughs> I 
I was supposed to cry here. Was that good? Was that good for you? Hmm? No? No response. Okay. I am simply... I am simply a husband and father who happened to stumble into something he was good at and that pays a fuck ton of money. I... I just took things too far. Yeah. Yeah. Like it was all my fault. To all my turtle lords, to all my turtle lords, I know many of you are surprised to know that I even have a wife and a son. Even Enrique over at Be and Beds had no idea. I, you know, I was there yesterday and he told me that I didn't look so good. So I told him that my family had been kidnapped by a foreign government. And he said, Papi, do you have a family? <laughs> Man, you had the guy money every single day for years and he never notices the ring on your finger. The ring on your finger. Guys, come on. I think we forgot something, huh? But he shared his condolences for my family being kidnapped by offering me a free can of soda. So, no hard feelings. Maybe next week, maybe next week I'll tell my dog died and get a free slice. Most of you don't know I have a family because, well, to tell the truth, I stopped talking about them on here years ago. And there's a reason for that. When I stopped talking about my family and started talking about plastic bags, our numbers went through the roof. And when our numbers went through the roof, I started making more money. Plastic fucking bags got more downloads than Sir Paul McCartney. So if you want me to speak from my heart and to tell the truth, the truth is I have no idea how, how all of this happened. Uh, I'm just a blue collar guy from Brooklyn. When I say I stumbled into all of this, I honestly really mean it. When I first walked into this bar 15 years ago, I had no idea what kind of an impact it was going to have on my life or, or all of your lives as well. I just honestly, I just honestly had to take a shit. <laughs> we were on our way home. We were on our way home from the park when nature decided it wasn't done with me yet. We've all been there, right? Just walking along, minding your own business, strolling along. You hear that? You hear that? Is that me? <laughs> okay. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. You're walking along. Everything's fine. And then all of a sudden, everything's not so fine. And everything's going to get much worse if you don't find a toilet like within, I don't know, the next, the next seven seconds. Now, there was no way in hell I was going to make it home in time. So I ran into the first place I knew for a fact had a public restroom. By the way, that is one of the most important life skills you will need to develop in order to survive here in the Big Apple. I know things are looking bleak on Bleecker Street right now. But trust me, when all the dust settles, you will still need to find a toilet. And you would be surprised how many smart, charismatic, hardworking people have no idea where the shit in this city. Pissing is one thing. You can piss anywhere. Hell, open up the window and piss out into the street for all I care. People will convince themselves that it is a leaking air conditioner instead of considering the truth, right? Because it's easier that way. <laughs> Hey, oh, up here, welcome to New York City, here's some piss.
Start spreading the news. I'm pissing today. I want to be a part of it. New York, New York. Anybody could find a place to piss in this city. You want to really impress me? Find a place to shit right now like your slacks depend on it. True story. One time, my mom came to visit, so we took my little Joey to see the tree at Rockefeller Center. And to all you Australian listeners out there, I'm not talking about a kangaroo, I'm talking about my son. It was a beautifully planned night out on the town with my family. I was going to ask my mom if I could borrow $300 to buy Christmas presents. It was 2018. I was 42 years old and about to ask my mommy for money. Hey, you know, I know I've been through worse, right? Sure. I'm not scared right now. Kidnap my family. Douse me in maple syrup. Just don't make me ask my mommy for money. <laughs> the night started out great, you know? We were all getting in the holiday spirit, all cuddled up together, sipping hot chocolate and eating cookies and looking up at this beautiful symbol of hope. Mom was about to ask someone to take our picture when I realized I had to take a shit. And I mean fast. Look, look, I, I, I knew the hot chocolate and cookie combination was risky, but I didn't think it would hit me that fast. I thought I could come up with some kind of time release plan, you know? And then I made the mistake of telling my mother. To, to this day, I have no idea why I told her. I, 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 I turned into a 12-year-old. I said, I, I, I think I need to use the bathroom. And then my mother said something to me that I will never forget for the rest of my life. She looked me dead in my eyes. And she said, maybe you should find a CVS. A fucking CVS? I mean, come on, this is the woman who raised me? When have you ever seen a bathroom in a CVS? I mean, suggest a, a Whole Foods, a, a Starbucks or something. You know, give me a fighting chance. I was in shock. My own mother, the woman who was married to my father, had no idea where to shit in the city. But luckily, I still had my street smarts about me and my spidey sense kicked in. I took a look at my surroundings. I was in, I was in Rockefeller Center, a massive tourist attraction. I knew that they had a ton of shops and restaurants in their basement. Surely there had to be some kind of public toilet down there, right? But I had a backup plan. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. In case that basement turned out, out to be a bust, there was a show going on over at Radio City. I could pretend that I was one of the drivers for the Rockettes, sneak inside, take my dump, maybe catch a few minutes of the show, and then boom, I'm out of there, right? That was the plan. Yeah. That was the plan. I told my wife, <laughs> I told my wife that I had to make a phone call. I, we, we, she knew the truth. We'd been married 10 years at this point. She knew that the man she had decided to start a family with was only seconds away from shitting his pants. I ran, knock kneed towards the basement, the Rockefeller Center. I got inside, made a sharp right, and there I found not just one, but 15 public toilets. It was great. Yeah, I, you remember that scene in Die Hard uh, when he blows up the elevator shaft, just finding a way to survive with only seconds to spare? Mm -hmm. That was me. And then, and then something magical happened. When I sat down on that toilet, I felt everything leave my body. 
And I'm not just talking about the hot chocolate and the cookies and, and the tuna fish sandwich and the bacon, egg, and cheese and the 16 cups of coffee with extra cream. No, I'm not talking about that. I, I'm talking about all my fear, all my doubt, all my anxiety went into that toilet. I was, I was no longer concerned about how I was going to provide for my family because I found a place of peace in this fucked up world. 27 minutes later, I get a text from my wife saying that they were getting cold, so they were heading home. And then, yeah, top it off, she sends me a picture of the three of them in front of the tree, a family photo without me. The first, the first of many. And instead of running outside and trying to get us all together to take another picture, like a good husband, father, and son would do, I made the decision that would eventually lead us to why we are here today. I enjoyed and relished that feeling of sitting on that toilet. In that moment, I didn't give a fuck about my family. I sat on that toilet until the lights went out. And that, and that was the biggest mistake I ever made. Eventually I jumped on the train got home, went to bed, and pretended like nothing ever happened, like I didn't have this out-of-body experience. But then, the epiphany came. On June 7th, 2020, a day that will live in infamy, we were leaving Washington Square Park when I ran into the first place I knew for a fact had a public restroom. I ran into the building, ran down those stairs, swung open the door, and there I found her for the very first time. Just, just sitting there, like she had been waiting for me to find her. And as soon as I sat down on this toilet, as soon as I sat down on this toilet, I understood why every night my father would come home from work, grab the newspaper, and disappear until dinner. It wasn't because he didn't love us. It was the silence. Nobody asking him to fix the dishwasher. Nobody telling him that he was late on a payment for a bill. Nobody suggesting they go to couples counseling. Silence. You drop your pants, you sit down, you hear some splashing, and then nothing. Silence. You sit on the throne until your legs go numb. You let all your worries and responsibilities just flush away until you have to come back to reality. But Unlike my father, I found a way to never go back. Um, where are we? Uh, 
Um, I don't believe this is in the script that we prepared for today's show. I was at home six days ago because I haven't, I haven't lived there in a very, very long time. And I, I don't want, I don't want to die without them knowing how sorry I am. I don't want to die without them knowing how sorry I am. Okay. Fine, 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 okay? I'll get back on track, just turn that goddamn thing off. Right, hey, where, where are we? Right, this stall. This stall was 10 times better than any of the stalls at Rockefeller Center. The bar upstairs was a ghost town before we started doing the show here. I mean, I, I could have sat on this toilet for days and nobody would have even noticed that I was there. But then, but then, like Moses parting the Red Sea, God sent me a miracle. My son, boom, kicks open the door and videos me doing my business. I, I swear, at that moment, I really wanted to kill that fucking kid until he showed me all the hits we were getting online. And then boom, 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 everything came together. Everything made sense. You know, my friends have always told me that I should start my own podcast, that I had the gift of gab, that I could talk to anyone about anything. So I started paying Ronnie, the owner of the bar, $20 a week to record here in this stall. And this toilet brought me more money than I could have ever imagined. Even, even Sir Paul McCartney sold more records strumming his guitar than he did at the height of Beatle mania. <laughs> God bless you, Paul. And although And although this whole thing might not end the way I want it to, I have to send a very special thank you to Joe Rogan. Without Joe Rogan, none of this would be possible. Without Joe Rogan, my family would still be stuck in that shitty one-bedroom apartment in Sunset Park. You know, I know a lot of you turtlers look up to me, but I would be nothing without Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan. Joe fucking Rogan. You want to know something about Joe Rogan? Hmm? Joe Rogan has created more opportunities for pathetic white men to succeed than slavery. Oh, come on, God. Come on. I thought I could have some fun, you know? They're going to set me on fire and all, right? Right? You, 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 know, you, you know they're going to kill you, too, right? You know they're going to kill you, too. They're not just going to get rid of me and take you out to dinner, hon. So fuck you and fuck Joe Rogan. To all my turtle alerts, to all my turtle alerts, pay no attention to that alarm. It's actually the new doorbell for the bar. Uh, maybe, maybe we got a package or something. Maybe it's Amazon Prime delivering that double-headed dildo that you ordered two weeks ago, you fucking morons. Hey, listen, guys, listen, I got an idea, okay? Why don't we, at the end of the show, give our listeners Give our listeners a, a, an IQ test. Maybe Canada will forgive us, right? Maybe they'll forgive us once they find out how mentally handicapped they all are, right? No? No, no that's not good enough. Okay, fine, fine. I'm going to get back on track, okay? Okay, here I am. I'm back on track, guys. Come on. Work with me. Going viral. Going viral. Going 
viral. Made all my financial worries and all my doubts about who I was as a man disappear. I never asked my mother for money again. I was no longer the man with anxiety or depression or irritable bowel syndrome. I was no longer the man who was insecure about his wife making more money than him because I, <laughs> I was a podcaster. Hmm. But now, but now, as I sit, But now as I sit, ah, uh, but now as I sit on my death toilet, I can't help but think this was all a curse and a blessing. However, before I meet Prime Minister Putin's demands, there is one last thing I want to tell all of you turtle nerds. I read your letters. I read your letters, and I know a lot of you out there have cancer. But what if I told you our friends over at Relief Therapeutics for you can make your last days on Earth as good as the best days of your life? They just opened their own state-of-the-art hospice center in Austin, Texas, and it is fantastic. I actually went on a tour of it a couple of months ago, and let me tell you, that hospice is better than my place in the Hamptons. Unlimited morphine, high-speed internet, all-you-can-eat liquid buffets, and the most comfortable beds. And right now, my turtle urge can get their first day free when they book a two-month hospice stay just by using the code PODCAST at the checkout. That's relieftherapeuticsforyou.com and use the code PODCAST at the checkout. You must have cancer to apply, and all bookings are final. Jesus Christ. <laughs> you guys are pathetic. <laughs> oh, come on, man. Shut it off. Shut it off. I'm, 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 I'm meeting all of your requirements, okay? I'm doing what you asked. Silence. When my bones turn to ash, all my turtle herds will remember me as a hero, the man who sacrificed himself so his family can live. I thought I wanted silence, but the silence I've experienced the last six days has been deafening. Actually, Actually, I want to make an adjustment here. Is, is, that, is that okay with you? The silence I've experienced the last 13 years has been deafening. The longer the two of you have been gone, the louder the voices in my head have gone, uh, have, have become... Uh, 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 if I could go back in time, I wouldn't let this podcast consume me. I would spend more time with you than I did sitting on a toilet. Uh, uh, the first couple of years finding success, I, I, I thought all the money we were making would help me. I thought all the money I was making would help us, but... We were doing just fine living off of your salary. I thought I was doing this for us. But having all these years to think about it, I know I was doing it for me. For me. For me. I... I was doing it to feel more like a man because I was able to provide for my family for the very first time, spending 
every hour of every day sitting on a toilet trying to make the show better because I wasn't man enough to have my wife pay for everything. You, you remember when you thought I was having an affair? At this point, I wish I was having an affair. That would be easier to fix than all of this shit. I would do anything. I would do anything to hold you in my arms one last time. I, I, I wasted so much time. I'm, I'm sorry for that. I would, I would do anything, anything to just sit down with Joseph and have him tell me about all the things I missed, the, the graduations, the, the ball games. I just, I just don't know how to make that happen. But I never, ever, ever stopped loving you both. I have spent the last 13 years trying to find a way to get us all back together. And I will continue to try un un until my, until my bones turn to ash. No matter what happens, I will hold the both of you in my heart and my soul. A soul cannot be burned. Walking, walking through our home that was once so full of life, now full of silence. The longer they've been gone, the more, the longer they've been gone, the more it feels like they never existed. The longer they've been gone, the more it feels like it's always been just me and my throne. And it hurts to say this, but maybe that's for the best. Maybe instead of surrendering tonight, I'll call Poutine's bluff. Maybe I will let my family die and let the city continue to burn to the ground because I know for a fact Poutine doesn't have the balls to go to war with the greatest country to ever exist. Fuck! Maybe I'll let my wife and my son die to show once and for all that the United States of America doesn't surrender to fascist fucks. That's not what I agreed to. I told you I would let them set me on fire and stop this war and sell the most boner pills in the history of broadcasting. And you fucking lied to me. <laughs> you told all of me they would be okay. What other surprises do you have for me here, huh? What other? You know what? You know what? Maybe I got a surprise for you too, okay? Maybe, maybe instead of threatening me, Prime Minister Putin, you and President Chicken Shit should thank me. Because when I do die, oh, which will not be tonight, I will be remembered as a hero who helped his fans get through their mundane lives. And as for you, Putin, when you die, which will be very, very soon, you will be remembered as nothing more than a fucking weasel who used a cheat code to try to dethrone the king of podcasting, and it didn't work. I am still the king! <laughs> Man, this is 
called show business, baby. And you took it seriously. And uh, the truth be told, I really take offense to that. I, 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 I know I heard that. You heard that. <laughs> something, something wicked this way comes. I am the reason thousands of human beings, not just Americans, were able to create generational wealth because I started a podcast instead of shitting my pants. Sure, people died along the way, but how many people were able to live because of what we accomplished here? How many people were able to experience or authentic freedom because I showed them the path to salvation because I showed them that you can be your own boss because I showed them that your limitations are only what you believe they are do not do not let the prime minister destroy this bond that we have make it Make it so that the only way these fascist bastards can rid you of my spirit is through electric shock therapy. No matter what happens to me, I negotiated with all of our sponsors and to make sure that each and, 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 and every one of our promo codes will live on for eternity. My presence will be felt on this earth un un until the end of time. Uh, how many children are breathing right now because my turtle alerts listen to me, huh? How many doctors, lawyers, scientists, uh, uh, firemen, and, 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 and policemen, and, and soldiers are currently walking around this country because my turtle alerts couldn't get their willies working until they listened to me? No matter what happens to me, my brain and my soul will continue to thrive inside the minds of my little turtlers. I put myself, I put myself in the blood of this country long before you even downloaded a show, poutine. I am the pecker they use. I am the protein supplements and the CBD they take. I am the corporate card they use with 4% cash back. I am the stamps that they print at home instead of going to the post office. You can't kill me, Poutine, because I won't let you. To whomever is holding my wife and son hostage, I want you to raise your gun and point it to their heads because I am about to speak from the heart. I am about to speak the truth to all my turtle nerds. Grab your guns and nutsacks, baby, because we're about to go to war. Prime Minister Putin, Prime Minister Putin, we stopped broadcasting this show from the bathroom of a bar on Bleecker Street 13 years ago. Surprise! <laughs> what? No alarm? What happened? I guess whoever is manning the alarm decided to run for their life. You know how great this feels to be able to get this out there, finally? We stopped broadcasting this show from the bathroom of a bar on Bleecker Street 13 years ago. After finding success, you know, with the first two years, 
I decided to tell my wife what I was doing. And what a fucking mistake that was. <laughs> Seriously, guys, listen to me. Don't ever tell your wife what you're working on. Let them think that you're having an affair. Especially if you're trying to launch your own podcast or brew your own beer in the basement. I told my wife, I told my wife that I was connecting with millions of people and interviewing Sir Paul McCartney all while sitting on a toilet. And she, rightfully so, had me committed. I have been trapped in the Rogan Institute for mental health for the last 13 years. I, I know in, in the first couple of years that you, you tried to have me released, but they told you I was still sick. And eventually they told me that you stopped trying, that, that you m moved on. But I know you never stopped loving me. When I was admitted, I found out that the hospital administrator, Dr. Dick Cheney, no relation, was a huge fan of the show, but an even bigger fan of all the money we were making here. He built this set in one of the break rooms and wrote every single word I have spoken for the last 13 years. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a facade. This is not Bleecker Street. That son of a bitch promised me. He promised me that he would set me free once he became a billionaire, but that was a long time ago. And I'm sure, I am sure that he never realized his thoughts on plastic bags <laughs> would create World War III. Prime Minister Putin, I need you to forgive me. You can see now, you can see, I am also a victim here. I need you to give me a second chance with my family, please. I have, I have never personally been to Canada, but from what, I've, from what I hear, they are a very kind and welcoming people up there. Can you welcome me? I will say whatever you want me to say. I just need you to forgive me. I know my family may have moved on, but I never stopped loving them like, like I know they had never stopped loving me. I need that second chance. I need it to be the husband and father I know I can be. I will shit my pants before I ever leave their side again. Okay? Okay? Here we go. I am ordering all of my turtle alerts to stop turning your man caves into prisons and immediately release any Canadians you are currently holding hostage. I am also ordering all of you to pay reparations to the families of those you have harmed or worse due to the sound of my voice. Let it be known that no Canadians trying to ban the use of plastic bags deserves the pain that we, that I, that I have caused them. In order to make the world a better place in which to live, I honestly feel we should all switch to reusable bags.
Despite everything, I was forced to say here in the last 13 years, I stopped using plastic bags in 2010. Prime Minister Putin. Hello there. You know what? If you are going to send me, set me on fire, I prefer to meet you outside. It's a Brooklyn thing. Despite all the pain I've been through in here, I don't see the point of destroying a perfectly good toilet. If you can hear the sound of my voice. Whether you've been a fan since you were a child or this is your very first time, I want you to listen to me closely. I know everything that you heard tonight may have come as a shock. I know that... I know that Dick Cheney is probably halfway to Cuba. I know that most of New York City is dust. But I believe that there is still hope for all of us. Our human spirit is stronger than any plastic bag, any terrorist, any politician, or any podcast that you stick in between your ears. Our spirit is created with love, kindness, and compassion. But we let it rot away by believing we aren't enough by comparing ourselves to each other instead of loving one another. The next time, the next time you find yourself sitting on a toilet at a wedding or, or a reunion or a party or, or, or at work, just scrolling on your phone, killing time, or listening to a podcast to avoid talking to the real people in your life, I want you to think of me. And I want you to know that I would do anything to be able to get up and flush away all that fear, all that doubt, all that anxiety, and go sit at the dinner table and ask my wife and son about their day. Get up. Get up. Get up and flush. Tell them you love them. Tell them you're sorry. I love you. And I'm sorry. <laughs>